This soundtrack is being narrated by Henry Lansford, Public Information Officer for the National Center for Atmospheric Research. It is not intended as formal narration for the film, but simply as comments on the various scenes for use by a writer. This is the launch of the ATS-1 in December of 1966. The fact that photographic coverage by the spin scan camera on the ATS-1 of the Central Pacific Basin was to be available was one of the reasons that the Lion Islands experiment was planned and operated. These ATS-1 photographs show the region where the experiment was conducted. In the vicinity of the Lion Islands, a group of atolls about 1,000 miles south of Hawaii. These atolls span the intertropical convergence zone, a region that is of great interest to meteorologists and a region where there is a serious shortage of observational data. The experiment was designed to obtain atmospheric data by a great many means. On the left is Dr. Henry van de Bogard of the National Center for Atmospheric Research. The other person in the picture was Dr. Edward Zipser of NCAR, who was scientific director for the project. These scenes at the airport in Honolulu show preparations for taking people and equipment to the Lion Islands. Military aircraft supplied most of the transportation for people and supplies. The Air National Guard was particularly helpful in supplying logistical support for the experiment. Honolulu was the staging area for the experiment and was the rear area headquarters during the experiment. In the cap, now the scene was too short. Here we have a sequence of scenes that are more or less a montage of footage taken on different flights between Honolulu and the Lion Islands and in the vicinity of the islands. The large military aircraft are all performing logistical jobs in connection with the experiment. This is Dr. Edward Zipser of NCAR, scientific director of the Lion Islands experiment. Dr. Zipser may be identified in sub subsequent scenes because he walks with a cane. Ralph Coleman of NCAR is adjusting a camera for taking cloud photographs. Both the Army and the Air Force supplied meteorological observing teams to make conventional radio sound observations of atmospheric conditions. In the checked blue shirt is Dr. Werner Sumi of the University of Wisconsin who conceived the spin, can, spin scan camera on the ATS-1 satellite. In the green shirt is Dr. Julian Pike of NCAR. The bearded man in the white shirt is Dr. Edward Zipser. There were a great many logistical problems encountered during the experiment. 
this blue and white aircraft is NCAR's Queen Air, Beach Queen Air research aircraft. Fueling was done from 50-gallon drums. The aircraft operations were very much field operations with a minimum of support facilities available. The NCAR Queen Air operated off the airstrip on Palmyra Atoll, which was the largest of the three atolls involved in the experiment. The other two were Christmas and Fanning. Although birds in the vicinity of the airstrip presented a considerable hazard to aircraft, there were no operational accidents caused by collisions with birds. Cleon Bider, an engineer with the NCAR Research Aviation Facility, working in the Queen Air. Here, as all through the film, we have put together similar scenes taken sometimes in different times and places. We only had one photographer, and he only spent a period of two weeks in the islands, so that we have had to use a certain amount of license in editing the film to tell a complete story. Queen Air landing on Palmyra. data gathered by the instruments on the research aircraft were converted to magnetic tape to be computer compatible. Instrumentation such as this on the ground was maintained by members of the NCAR field observing facility. William S. Lanterman, Jr., head of the NCAR Field Observing Facility, was field program manager for the Lion Islands experiment. He was in charge of the field operations, just as Dr. Zipser was in charge of the scientific work. Satellite photographs were received by this antenna, which was set up by NASA for the experiment. The people who actually participated in the day-to-day -day work during the experiment included NCAR staff members, people from the military services, people from universities. Observations went on day in and day out regardless of the weather. The fluctuation in the weather during the period of the experiment in this region was one of the primary interests of the experimenters. Ocean observations were also made. This scene shows measurements being taken of sea surface temperature.
This is Stephen Cox of the University of Wisconsin, one of the university participants in the experiment. He's being particularly cautious because there were sharks in the water below. This device is a radiometer for measuring incoming solar radiation. Dr. Robert Rogatsky of the University of Wisconsin. Conditions on the atolls were primitive and the equipment was pretty sketchy. Wherever possible, aircraft that were flying on logistical missions were also used to gather data by being equipped with time-lapse cameras for photographing clouds. This is one of the time-lapse camera setups. Airdrops of supplies were made occasionally. Here, Dr. Zipser and Dr. Van de Bogard, back at the University of Hawaii, look over some of the data from the experiment. Dr. Zipser was in the field during the first half of the experiment, while Dr. Van de Bogard was in Honolulu. Then about halfway through, they traded places. Dr. Zipser went back to the University of Hawaii. Dr. Van de Bogard went out into the field. These MRI units, automatic atmospheric data gathering units, were very useful during the experiment. This PBY, which was chartered for the entire experiment, was the workhorse. It was used to take supplies in where no airstrip facilities were available. This is Dr. Clifford Murino of the National Science Foundation. Unlike the military aircraft, the PBY being under charter to NCAR was in the service of the Lion Islands experiment all during the experiment.
brown check shirt is Bill Lanterman of NCAR, the field program director for the Lion Islands experiment. The scenes of local color are fairly self-explanatory, I believe. For further comment, we would have to have one of the people who actually spent some time in the islands. We can provide further information on this film by conferring with some of the people who actually participated in the Lion Islands experiment. <laughs> 